uh, my boss at that corporate job called me in the office and was trying to tell me how to live my life. And that's when I realized that I do not want to work in the corporate world with such a, uh, such a rough hierarchy. My family's actually been in the food industry for as long as I know. My dad used to be a head chef at a um, Italian restaurant back in, um, back in Hong Kong. So food has been a very vital part of our lives because um, that's just who we are. <laughs> um, so being a baker here uh, involves a lot of sort of long hours, especially early starts. That ensures that all the customers are getting the, their products fresh in the morning and we're not having any old stale products. We don't want that. Uh, we stand behind everything we make and sell because it's a part of us and it's a passion, it's what we do. It's why we come into work every morning. We do do your normal traditional bakery products, but we put our own sort of flair to it, make it ourselves, put a little bit of uh, our own personality into it. Um, so a lot, of pers a lot of personality, I guess, a lot of passion to food. It must be a huge foodie to work at the bakery. You come along, Dave. Like an hour later, and he's like, are you coming in for your interview? And I was like, what? I was like, no, it's tomorrow. And he said, no, I said Wednesday. I was like, no, you, but you said Wednesday, like, the wrong day. So I rocked on up with track pants on, no makeup, nothing. And then he was like, oh, no, it's all good. And then, like, now he just doesn't stop talking about it. He's like, oh, you came on the wrong day. And I'm like, you gave me the wrong day. Uh, we actually do your very, uh, like, a very common um, donut on Fridays as a uh, Friday treat to our industrial workers around the area. So every single week we come up with a different flavour, um, different sort of garnishing on top to make it look nice and pretty and customers all around town come in um, just to get a donut regardless of what flavour it is. It's pretty, um, pretty awesome to see our customers come in um, to support us and sort of get real excited to see the flavour. I remember a few weeks ago um, a customer got a few donuts and he asked us what flavour it was and we told him it was a strawberry cheesecake and his, his face just lit up. It was, it was, that was the best feeling ever because he came in with no intention, with no, with no knowledge of what flavour it is. He, just, he bought the donuts because he just knew they were good. But then um, as soon as he found out that it was his favourite flavour, oh, it was the best feeling ever. So it's very satisfying to see. So every single week um, we fill these donuts and fill these croissants with different flavours and different garnishings. Um, but this isn't really decided until um, the start of the week because um, we just fill it with whatever we feel like during the moment. Uh, we look at sort of a uh, few different factors such as the seasoning, the season, season the season, um, the temperature and also any sort of special offence that's going on during that time. And then uh, we just sort of compose some sort of funky, um, quirky flavour. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the lemon filling. We make the tarts and we can put that out for um, put it out tomorrow morning. Would you consider doing kimchi croissants? Kimchi? Yeah, let's put some kimchi in it. Maybe some blue cheese as well. No, no, actual, like kimchi. Like kimchi? We kimchi, can do. Kimchi butter. Yeah. Do you know what I'll buy it? I think before we move, jump into the kimchi flavour, that's a bit too extreme. We should sort of take steps. So maybe we should do something like shallots. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, it's a bit more mild than going straight into a, uh, a uh, kimchi flavour because yeah. it is a bit of stream. Alright, get to work, sir. Okay. Move your ass. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's, that, that's, that's us in the start of the week. But just most of our creativity comes from Sarah. Yeah, no, that's yeah. We always write down our ideas like this. See, this is why I always have this piece of paper. <laughs> always ideas in my messy uh, note handwriting. <laughs> I would say the most popular hands of asked for flavour would be the tiramisu. Tiramisu full croissants. The first week we sold this out, we sold out of these croissants within probably 10 minutes of them being done. It's just the response we've had with the community and everyone has just been amazing. It's unbelievable. For my schooling wise and education wise, I actually did not study culinary or anything along those lines. So I moved to Japan after graduating from uh, university. So, so basically like headhunting like the sales manager of uh, Coca-Cola to go to Pepsi. Why would someone like that downgrade to Pepsi, you know what I mean? That was such a challenging job. So that was very hard, it was basically HR and sales at the same time. Because I'm, I'm doing interviews, I'm running CVs, yeah I'm trying to sell a job to someone. It was pretty cool. Yeah, pretty challenging, it was, it was full on. I was doing longer hours than this. Uh, my boss at that corporate job called me in the office and was trying to tell me how to live my life. And that's when I realised that I do not want to work in the corporate world with such a, 
uh, such a rough hierarchy. Um, so that's when I moved back to my, um, the hometown of my partner, a uh, very small town in um, Japan, and then there was a small bakery that I always used to go to. And then I was, I was talking to them one day, and then I was telling them about how uh, you know, I love sort of um, breads and baked good items. And then I was asking them, oh, would you mind if I, if I followed you, um, if I shadowed you, because I really want to learn the art of Japanese uh, bread baking. And then they were very, uh, very welcoming. And they said, yes, definitely. So then after that, um, I was basically an apprentice there for, uh, for quite a few weeks. And that's when they uh, taught me from scratch the art of their baking and their trade secrets. <laughs> this book is actually, this book means a lot to me because I've never been to culinary school, never really had a uh, proper degree in uh, sort of the food sector, but um, this was my first sort of, this is my actual first recipe book and it's the first recipes I've ever got given slash uh, followed. So this is, um, this is my um, favorite recipe, it's called a uh, potato focaccia. Focaccia is an Italian bread, uh, used with a lot of olive oil. Uh, very, I say, it's very well known for all those uh, holes they poke in the middle. Mush, and then we've got instant yeast. They got sato, mizu, fried onion, bacon, olive oil. <laughs> the thoughts of um, the thoughts of a nice fluffy uh, bread, Italian bread, with salty um, bacon and the fragrance of uh, fire shallots is just amazing. So I came back and then I wanted to introduce these sort of new baking techniques and new baking styles into the community but there was nowhere that I could really go to sort of really practice my skills apart from actually opening up my own place. So we actually had to take a very dramatic uh, turn and direction in terms of uh, what we specialised in. Um, we started off sort of specialising in what I learned, which is the Japanese um, Japanese baking, Japanese bread, uh, bread baking. And uh, now we've sort of turned to a direction of uh, French pastries, uh, French, a lot of French pa um, baking. Um, this is, wasn't too much of a change in a sense because a lot of French, um, a lot of Japanese, sorry, a lot of Japanese um, baking is actually influenced by the French, um, but it's definitely very different <laughs> to what we had in mind. For those who are wanting to start their own uh, sort of business, um, why advice would be just stick in there. The first few years are going to be very challenging, uh, very stressful times, yet it's very exciting and rewarding at the end. It took us a few years to get to where we are now, but we can finally see what we are and who we've become, and it's a very rewarding process. Two of our customers who have supported us uh, for the duration we've been open. I just want to thank you, we're very grateful to have your support, especially for uh, these very difficult times. And um, we're obviously a very small team. Um, our creativity does have a limit, so if you do have any sort of different flavours or different items that you like us to sort of experiment with and to try out, please let us know. We're very open to it.